Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Procedures in Geriatric EMS, Episode 2, Establishing Intravenous Access. At the end of this episode, you should understand the importance of vascular access in older adults, understand the changes in skin and vasculature which affect the ability to obtain that access, learn strategies to optimize your access attempts, and learn how BLS technicians can aid ALS technicians in establishing intravascular access. When working with an older adult, getting peripheral vascular access is incredibly important because their comorbidities are usually large. There's usually a lot more working with an older adult than a younger person. So even if they're presenting with a temperature, they probably have a history of heart failure. Or if they're presenting with chest pain, they probably have a history of pneumonia, something like that. These are all things that can be treated with IV access, whether it's fluids or medications. When you don't do that, that'll be the patient that crashes on the way to the hospital. <laughs> so it's, it's really important to have it and not need it, then need it and be too stuck to get it. In the older adult, rapid vascular access is very important when uh, they're very sick, obviously, that goes without saying. But somebody who presents with pneumonia symptoms, they can go septic in a matter of minutes. Um, their pressure will drop and they can still be slightly mentating. You won't know that they need the access that you needed to put in a while ago. The fluid, you just keep pushing fluid and that's the only way you're gonna save them, to get them to where they need to go. Um, giving nitro to an older adult, they're gonna respond badly to that a lot of the times. You don't wanna give somebody nitro without an IV access and have their pressure drop and have no way to save them. Now you've created another problem and all you needed to do was have the IV access to save that. Um, and somebody who unfortunately, you know, Alzheimer's or dementia, by getting that access rapidly, you can give them medication to calm them down or um, you know, give them what they need to help them out. There are many situations where a peripheral IV need to be established in the adult. And in a short podcast, we're not going to be able to go over all of them. But certainly, uh, older patients are more prone to uh, things like hypoglycemia. There are more diabetics where you need to get an IV in and give them the D50 and one of the things that's interesting in these patients is because as we age we do not have the glycogen stores in our liver they uh, are far more likely to need the intravenous dextrose than the glucagon that you would normally give IM so you may not see as good a result. Other things that have to do with cardiac and breathing problems uh, you are going to need IV access for the administration of uh, medications and you need to rapidly start the IV in order, order to improve uh, their uh, outcome. IV access is important in older adults because they have many comorbidities which can cause them to deteriorate quickly. Patients with severe diseases should have IVs placed earlier and as always follow your local protocols. And essentially as you get older several things happen. The skin thins out this is made much worse in certain types of patients, patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, as we all know, anybody on steroids, and it makes the skin far more prone to tear. So you have to be more careful when you start an IV, and it may be more difficult to actually tape the IV down and to get it to stay in place. Uh, other than that, you should have an easier time in many older patients because you lose a lot of subcutaneous fat and it brings the vessels closer to the surface. As we get older, several things happen within the blood vessels. I think as everybody has learned, they get calcium in their blood vessels, they get very hard, the veins tend to roll, and it is much more difficult to start and IV in these patients. One of the things that helps is to use your free hand, your non-dominant hand, to kind of tether the uh, vein as you're putting in the IV. That will help stabilize it and keep it from rolling. Other things that have been talked about to improve your ability to start an IV is tunnel it farther on the skin in an older patient, which helps to pin down the vessel prior to the establishment of the uh, IV. The other thing is that the valves are much harder 
uh, and more firm in the older patients, and if you're up against the valve, you will not get return or have impedance to flow with, uh, in the IV. One of the things that you can do if you have a helper is to have them tether the arm, meaning take the skin and use your hand to kind of pull the skin taut, which makes it easier to actually get the IV within the vein. Changes with aging that make IV access more difficult include medications, which may make an elderly patient's skin tear easier, loss of subcutaneous fat, and calcium deposits, which harden blood vessels. In placing IV access in the older adult, um, there's a lot of different things you can do and each patient is very different um, to generalize them. I use an alcohol wipe on their skin a lot of times because their skin is so flaky from those multiple medications that they take or prednisone or something like that that by putting the alcohol wipe on it, you kind of make everything translucent. You can see things that perhaps you didn't see before because of the dry flaky stuff. And traction. Traction is the most important thing you can do to get IV access on somebody. By putting a little traction at the bottom of that vein before you stick, stick it in, you can stop that vein from rolling back and forth. You can make that skin that's all flabby and foldy up, take it down, get that IV access. If a little bit doesn't work, use more, use more, use more. If you have to put your whole hand on it to do it, that's what you need to do. Those are the two simple things to do to get IV access and if it takes somebody else to hold their arm down that could be really important too because a lot of the elderly are afraid or with the dementia aspects they won't want the IV. So you're working with bad skin, you know, loose skin and then dementia it's really tough to try to do that so it's good to have your partner help you out. What are some strategies for working with rolling veins? I definitely put a lot of traction below the site, pull that as taut as I can. I don't enter the skin right where I think I'm going to get the needle into the vein. I get the needle under the skin next to it and take a moment to make sure that the vein is still right where you want it because odds are if you put it in, it's kind of pushed it away a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you put it in, put more traction again because you already are under the skin and now you're kind of putting that needle and that vein next to each other and advance it from there. Um, a lot of poking and prodding isn't going to help. Y you know, if you're not going to get it in the first 60 seconds or so, give up. Go to find something else. You know, the lack of the sub-Q fat doesn't let them stay where they need to go, so that's why you have to use a lot of traction, even if it's your whole hand, to stretch the skin over the vein. So that's the only way it'll stay still. Clearly, when you have an unstable or a critical patient, you need to be able to, to get that, that peripheral, back, ac peripheral access and IV is, is typically where we go. Um, fortunately, many of us have access to, a, to an IO needle. Um, we're still getting into that culture where it is acceptable to use the IO, particularly in a, in a life um, changing situation where we need to be able to, to push that medication rapidly, uh, make sure we have that access. We can use the IO route um, for a critical, critical situation rather than um, having to, to fight and struggle to get an IV. When I was a resident back many, many years ago, when the nurses couldn't get an IV uh, from pediatrics all the way up through the older population, we were called, which is kind of interesting because I certainly think a pre-hospital uh, person has more experience in starting a difficult IV probably than I do. But there were several things that I found that helped me tremendously. The first is if you take the blood pressure cuff on the upper arm and blow it up in between the systolic and diastolic pressure, you get maximal venous filling, uh, meaning that you're impeding the outflow of the blood to the veins um, while you're still getting arterial blood coming in. So you should plunk them up very nicely. I cannot tell you how often that has saved me uh, in a situation where I needed rapid IV access and I couldn't get it. What I would recommend is if you have a BLS person with you, have them monitor the blood pressure cuff uh, to make sure that it stays within that range. And within maybe 30 seconds, not very long, you will get very often a vein that you were unable to cannulate before being large enough that makes it uh, easier. Some strategies for gaining IV access. Use your partner to help. Use alcohol to help visualize the vein. Gentle traction can prevent tears and vein rolling, 
and consider intraosseous access if available and appropriate. Some ways BLS providers can help their ALS partners are by holding the arm, tethering the vein, and when multiple attempts are necessary, replacing the spent items. After viewing this episode, you should understand the importance of vascular access in older adults. Understand the changes in skin and vasculature which affect the ability to obtain vascular access. Learn strategies to optimize attempts at peripheral vascular access. And learn how BLS technicians can aid ALS technicians in establishing vascular access.